Hello, everyone. Uh, so we're going to start uh, with the webinar. So we have uh, our speakers already uh, joined here. So uh, today's webinar is covering a very important uh, topic, which is artificial intelligence, which is going to be a uh, main factor in coming years. So we have our esteemed speakers who would be covering the topic um, in detail and uh, in terms of having uh, Throwing, uh, sharing their uh, insights on them. Just quickly to tell you about uh, ourselves, Events for Sure and TikTok.com. Uh, Events for Sure uh, is, of course, uh, headquartered in India and uh, uh, with offices in California. And uh, of course, we have alliances in over 20 countries. Uh, of course, we are best-in-class law event management companies in India and of course uh, webinars and of course events in Delhi Singapore Dubai New York San Francisco worldwide so it has been 10 last 10 years that we have been active in this domain and uh, uh, we have support of a lot of in-house councils and vendors worldwide and uh, we have as I said 45 plus international conferences uh, uh, done and uh, all uh, industry-wide topics like uh, law, IP, GDPR, AI, tech, and other important topics covered on that. Coming to our sister concern, Ticketer.com, it is uh, in this first uh, legal technology sharing platform. We are coming up with a lot of exciting things. So uh, I would request all to visit our website, ticketer.com. It's evolving, and if you want to see a lot of uh, activity, which would uh, help all the law tech professionals worldwide to connect with uh, the law tech vendors and the in-house councils to uh, network and learn from each other. Of course, um, in terms of having uh, webinars, uh, online workshops, and virtual learning labs. We all, these are the things which help uh, everyone within the law fraternity to learn from each other and uh, get to know in terms of what are the new updates which are coming up in the industry. Uh, talking about uh, our speakers for today, we have uh, Mr. Zamir Nathani, who is uh, the Senior Vice President and General Counsel, UFO Movies India. And uh, I have uh, uh, Ms. P. V. Aruna Kumari, who's a partner with Kocher and, and Company, India. And uh, I, I would uh, now request uh, Zamir uh, to take over and, uh, uh, of course, uh, start by introducing yourself. And then uh, you can take over and let me know when you want me to change the slides. Uh, Zamir, can you hear me? Okay, so while we are waiting, I would request Aruna to give a short introduction introduction about us, yourself. Aruna. Hi, everyone. Hi, Aruna. Hi Ronnie. Uh, thank you for the uh, opportunity, Ronnie. And I'd like to introduce myself as the partner and uh, a resident partner at Kocher & Co. Hyderabad and um, I've been uh, practicing since more than um, two decades. And um, I have uh, put in you know, a quite uh, experience in the um, commercial, corporate commercial transactions and various areas of um, uh, you know, law legal practice, including uh, you know, developing um, this uh, interest in um, gaining academic knowledge and sharing with others uh, uh, on the artificial intelligence. And as part of uh, my passion uh, for knowing more on, uh, on and about uh, the artificial intelligence, uh, I've also been participating in uh, some of the events um, uh, for uh, you know, um, talking about the artificial intelligence and its uh, legal implications as well as uh, the uh, future of uh, legal profession uh, wherein um, we are looking at AI as uh, um, uh, as an important um, uh, as an important uh, game changer 
in the practice and uh, the technological advances. Uh, so, um, you know, uh, I'm a practicing lawyer and um, uh, the reason why I want to keep it brief is uh, the uh, topic that we are going to talk about is um, a very uh, interesting and a specific uh, area of uh, uh, law. I would not say it is, it is any area of law, but it is an area of technological uh, practice wherein we are looking at uh, the legal implications as to how it can play and how we as lawyers have to be uh, have to equip ourselves uh, to um, accommodate and accept the uh, uh, the technological advances and prepare ourselves to um, uh, really um, you know uh, combine it with our day to day practices thank you aruna for that introduction and uh, Okay, so I have uh, a lot of attendees who joined, uh, so uh, I can uh, ask uh, a couple, all of you to give us a small introduction about yourself and uh, help us understand one by one. I'll uh, just start with uh, Deepak, uh, Deepak Singhal. Um, I'm meeting you. Can you introduce yourself? Yeah, hi. Good afternoon. This is Deepak Singhal from Netlika Consulting. I'm handling uh, cyber security practice in Natrika. Excellent. And uh, we have offices all across. Uh, we have office in uh, Bombay, Bangalore, Hyderabad, and uh, Dubai, Singapore, and other multiple locations. I'm taking care of all uh, information security and cyber security projects. Excellent. So to, today's topic is something uh, more uh, close to your heart, heart I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Deepak, for joining us. Uh, I'll have the next speaker. I have James V. Uh, James, can you hear me? Uh, hello. Hi. Hi, James. James uh, yeah. you, yes, I can hear you. Can you introduce yourself, please? Yeah. Hi. Uh, this is James here. I'm in the compliance uh, team. Uh, with uh -huh. Baruch. Baruch is a petrochemical company uh, with Agnok and a uh, uh, European joint venture. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And uh, I have my next attendee, Leslie uh, Faisal de Cruz. Uh, Leslie, can you hear me? Hi, Leslie. Hi, Leslie, can you hear me? I suppose uh, Leslie is not able to hear. Uh, can I ask Neha, Neha Kalyani, please introduce yourself, Neha? Hi, Neha, can you hear me? Hello, Neha. I suppose Neha is uh, not able to hear. Uh, can I ask Mr. Rahul Tyagi? Uh, uh, can you introduce yourself? Rahul, can you hear me? Yeah, hi. Hi, I can hear you. So, hi, uh, Rahul. Good afternoon, everyone. I am uh, Rahul Tyagi. I am part of the legal and the compliance team for uh, Handrich. Uh, it's an Austrian based company. Uh, we have uh, offices globally and primarily we are active in four business divisions. We are equipment manufacturers for hydro business, for pulp and paper industry, for metals and separation business. Um, I am part of the legal and compliance team that takes care of uh, the entire Asia Pacific region extending up to even extending beyond to Australia and New Zealand as well. Um, uh, artificial intelligence is 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 the catchphrase these days, and uh, uh, and uh, I'm very excited to uh, uh, be updated with the developments in this industry that can assist us in our day-to-day uh, -day, uh, affairs. And uh, I'm excited to uh, bring uh, and inculcate one of these technologies and products uh, into our line of work as well. Excellent. Great. Thank you so so much for sharing, uh, Rahul. Uh, uh, 
Hi, Neha, can you hear me? Neha, Neha Kalyani? Uh, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Neha, please introduce yourself. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, this is Neha Kalyani from India. Uh, I work in field of IPR, intellectual property rights, and I have expertise working in patents and trademark. Uh, I would expect from this seminar to get more clarity on uh, how artificial intelligence will impact law industry and IP industry also. Because as, as we are aware that AI has already reached other domains and my interest would be to know further regarding the commission of AI and law domain. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much, Neha, uh, for uh, uh, bringing that uh, to uh, the notice. Uh, Okay, let's. Can you hear me now? Yes, Samir, we can hear you. Excellent. Thank oh, you wow. for joining us. Wow. Sorry, I'm <laughs> so, so that, happy that's, here. and I apologize that's, to everyone. No problem. Uh, thank you so much. And uh, Samir, uh, I would request you to start with your brief introduction, and then we uh, let me know. I can change the slide, please. Thank you. Yeah. So. You know, my introduction is that uh, I did my master's degree in law and then I joined a law firm where I service clients like Eureka Forbes, LG Electronics, uh, Motul Oil, Ginger Hotels, etc. And then I was uh, called by Reliance when they were planning to start Reliance Entertainment. So I joined Reliance Capital. We had seeding the... Zamir, hello. You're broken off, Zamir. Uh, we can't hear you. Zamir, we can't hear you. Um, just, uh, private equity from London Business School. Right, okay. uh, that's, that's my fine. brief English. Thanks. Great. Okay. So uh, let's uh, move forward, Zamir. Uh, do, do let me know uh, when you want me to change the slide. Okay. Yeah. So I'm ready with uh, everything. How world looks to future with artificial intelligence. Uh, yeah. yeah. So, you know, two, three examples I'll give you uh, quickly. One is about Google car and second is about United States patent office. So when when Google car was introduced, uh, you, you know, it's in the testing phase. I was uh, fortunately in California and I also visited a law firm where, you know, they were patenting artificial intelligence and uh, uh, other technologies which are growing up, you know, IOT, Internet of Things, etc. Now, my question to them was that, uh, you know, this artificial intelligence or Internet of Things and cloud technologies and all that when we are going for patenting of these uh, uh, technologies, are these technology at you know a nascent stage or at a mid level or at a very high uh, uh, intelligence level? And the answer was that that you know it's at a very nascent level, which means it's all in the testing mode. So even the patents which are filed, the patents are filed as the technology is growing up. So futuristically, that was one part of it. The second in Google car is that if Google car is introduced, which means during your transportation time, Google will provide you certain services which will be available on the app. So when you, while you're driving and if you want some service of Google, for example, to access Amazon.com at the moment, or you want to order something, you know, that kind of artificial intelligence, which Google car wants to build in, that how they can then monetize on the Google car and the technologies which they are incorporating in the car while you are driving from place one to place two. In case of USPTO, United States Patent and Trademark uh, Office, what they are doing in artificial intelligence space is that they are trying to develop artificial intelligence in case of patent specification search. So we have a prior art search, which means Today, if I go to any uh, technology registration, the patent examiner will try to find out whether this technology is new, is not obvious, or is not existing at the moment. 
Now today when I do a patent search, a patent examiner may get an answer of about 10,000 uh, technologies which look similar to the technology which I have come for registration as a patent. And then he has to find out whether they are same, similar or identical to these particular technologies and whether they can be patented or not patented. Now USPTO is currently doing a program where they are trying to build in artificial intelligence in the patent registration prior art search where if this technology is employed in long term the artificial intelligence will help you to narrow down the prior search and may even reduce your 10,000 search to 35 you know that's what they are uh, looking at. The only present scenario which is happening in USPTO is that the USPTO labor union is saying that if you reduce the work level to that extent, the labor may go down and therefore there is some discussion still going on on that stage. But yes, this is where I look the future of artificial intelligence where, you know, like like a professor in Harvard says that, you know, we uh, intellect will not be replaced by artificial intelligence, but human beings will be required to adapt to artificial intelligence in their domain for working in that space that's my take on the first topic uh, on the second one can you change the slide uh, in terms of advances in ai's inventiveness uh, i gave you one of the examples of the california law firm where i visited uh, during the same visit, I had an opportunity to visit to Facebook as well as uh, 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 the office of Apple. And you could really see the in inventiveness which is happening in the artificial intelligence space, you know, where Facebook is working on certain technologies uh, in space of AI and uh, Apple also is working in some space of AI. Though the focus of our discussion uh, while visiting Facebook and uh, Apple was on intellectual property rights. But while talking about intellectual property rights, these are all technological companies. So today for them, intellectual property right has now grown up, not from the branding, but from the technologies which they are going to bring in future. Now, when you talk about these technologies, what I saw in the in inventiveness of this artificial intelligence is the data set. For example, there are there are two companies uh, which have built in software if you want to hire somebody. So the inventiveness of this particular artificial intelligence is that that I give them a data set one, two, three, four, five, six criteria where I want somebody to be appointed for a position and that particular artificial intelligence mechanism will try to shortlist candidates and tell me that, you know, these are the probable candidates for the particular job. That's where the inventiveness of artificial intelligence is now coming up. Uh, the debate which is going on between the West and Europe is that whether you classify certain algorithms which are now written as a copyright or whether you classify them as patent as we are aware that in united states where you have algorithms of this particular nature they are always recognized as patents but if you go to the european side even copyright option is available because it's an it's a work of art and therefore it is recognized as a copyrightable article okay so i feel that we are advancing towards artificial intelligence one from the job perspective the second example I want to give is about an Indian company, which I read about uh, in Harvard Business School. Uh, this company basically was, uh, was, is a test taking company, like you have TOEFL and I, uh, I have IELS. Uh, this company basically does a testing mechanism for the engineers. So previously the trend in the technology world or the engineering business was that that I take somebody from IIT Mumbai or any prominent engineering college like MIT, United States, etc. What this company did, it's a Harvard case study. What this company did is that they developed an artificial intelligence mechanism and they started up and they developed a test based on that. 
and when engineering colleges are now approached across india from top to bottom to give this particular test which means even a person who's who's studying in an engineering college which is somewhere downside in india and not as prominent as iit a candidate's future can't be decided on the label of the institution he is attending a candidate's future will be decided by the intelligence he is carrying and this artificial intelligence software is actually a test taking software which keeps on building these questions and gradually bringing to the light that this is a good candidate though the institution is not well known but the uh, but the candidate is a good engineering candidate in terms of the merits which he has got by himself this is what the inventiveness of artificial intelligence is bringing us is advancing us towards our life okay this is my second one the third is recent development in artificial intelligence uh so prominently what we are aware about is uh, google car the second is about blockchain technology which is going to impact financial industry like anything and the third recent development in artificial intelligence which is happening is is all about the consumer behavior uh, which is going to take place okay so today when you use facebook today when you use instagram today when you like or dislike any post today when you are accessing your websites uh, google facebook has mechanism behind it as an artificial intelligence which is trying to garner what kind of data Uh, you are accessing and what kind of uh, data you would like to access okay that's one the second example i will give you is about amazon.com so when you visit amazon.com and you uh, access various uh, merchandises which are available there is an artificial intelligence mechanism which is trying to develop in itself what kind of taste you have in terms of the merchandise in terms of the color in terms of the price mechanisms etc so these are really the recent developments in artificial intelligence which is now trying to garner or basis the data sets which you are accessing as to what kind of choice a customer would like to have all right uh, one more recent development in artificial intelligence i have seen uh, very prominently you know is about google search so you make a google search about a thing and then when you find that that google search will also give you multiple choices on the right hand side all right so there is an artificial intelligence which has been gathered on the back door which is accessible in terms of your iphones which is accessible in terms of your access to google which is accessible in terms of your access to uh, facebooks and these are all the behind doors or the amazon.coms which are which are trying to access your data and to garner by this artificial intelligence what is the right choice you would like to make in future okay another another influential thing is happening is about uh, newspapers it's happening very gradually but we had a good debate at harvard business school uh, two months back where there was a debate between a traditional editor and the online uh, news which you are now seeing all right so when you access any online news or you keep accessing those particular data futuristically there is an artificial intelligence mechanism which is accessing what kind of news you are interested in all right it's not garnered uh, a good wavelength up till now but these are futures futuristically trying to capture your characteristics and behaviors and that's what the recent development in artificial intelligence is about okay uh the fourth one is about patent and ip law issues impacted by artificial intelligence this question basically comes up not only uh, in united states but also in india that whether your intellectual property laws or your treaties like your bern convention for copyright or your madrid conventions or protocol for your trademarks whether the laws and the treaties which are existing uh you know what issues will you face uh in terms of technologies such as artificial intelligence cloud computing blockchain technologies which are coming up are your are your laws adapted or uh, to to address artificial intelligence when it comes for intellectual property registrations 
uh, my take internationally uh, considering the market in Asia uh, North America and Europe is that uh, IP laws are quite sufficient and our conventions are also quite adapted so when you speak about any copyright conventions these are old conventions but it covers you as a work of art or a literary work so when you think about data sets or artificial intelligence consisting of data uh, the data basically which has been gathered more is looked from the perspective of privacy i feel the biggest issue which will come up in future is about privacy the the gdpr and as well as the other laws which are being framed now uh, are framed from the perspective that you know when you have things like artificial intelligence and cloud computing etc your data will be completely out uh, by virtue of which these companies and websites will decide your behavior and characteristics and present the same to you and whether you would be interested in that data being accessed by them or they having a control for example if somebody says to you for a day that for 24 hours whatever you access on your iphone i would i would be recording that you would have a fear and you would say no but the fact of the matter is that that's already been done by an artificial intelligence mechanism when we speak about cloud computing we are very comfortable to say that you know cloud computing is an issue we should not have the data stored locally but today your sms your email on the phone your whatsapp everything is on cloud computing which means all your data is there in the servers where it is required to be and you are not even aware whether it's in united states or netherlands uh, so i feel the present ip laws the issues which will arise under these artificial intelligence technologies or uh, cloud computing or other technologies uh, uh, the ip laws are adapted to it maybe you may require uh, some amendment to an extent to say that it's not about only branding or trademarking or copyright or patenting uh, of the things which you're bringing out but it would include words such as technologies so when you use the word technology you use the word internet of things you use the word artificial intelligence you get blockchain which is covered you get cloud computing which is covered so some technological connection between ip laws would be required to tweak otherwise i think broadly ip laws uh, will have no issues even the treaties which i have read uh, uh, in the past uh, on the burn conventions etc are quite adapted to uh, embracing the technologies which we are incorporating today uh, i only feel the issue will be more enlarged from the perspective of uh, privacy and that's why gdpr also had a provision of right to forget in india also we have the same problem because when i was speaking with justice shri krishna, shri krishna on privacy the biggest problem is that data is already out so what are you trying to protect by introducing a privacy law and that's where gdpr tried to address by saying that you know you have a right to forget you have my information from today onwards you will not use it and that's what we are going to have more critically than a broad IP law, which is already existing. That's my take on it. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you so much, Zamir, for sharing your insights on the topic. Now, I would uh, request uh, Aruna to take over. And uh, uh, please go ahead, Aruna. Yeah. Um, Ronnie, I'd like to uh, request you to take me to the first slide. So uh, today I'm going to discuss the liability issues for patent infringement by artificial intelligence. And uh, um, this is going to be very specific. And I'm going to uh, delve on uh, very specific issues uh, when it comes to patent infringement by artificial intelligence. Uh, next slide, please. So uh, before we uh, uh, get into the, um, uh, the uh, topic on, uh, about the liabil liabilities, I would like to uh, take you to the um, Indian context as to how artificial intelligence is dealt in Indian context. 
and we have been seeing that the there there has been quite dynamism in the definition of artificial intelligence moving from the na natural language processing to machine learning and to the machines that think and respond like humans we are seeing that artificial intelligence is demonstrating the abilities of human mind in terms of learning reasoning and problem solving it is also seen that the ai has developed through application of computer science and as you all know the mathematics psychology linguistics neuroscience etc and in india um, uh, there was a discussion paper presented um, on national strategy for artificial intelligence in june 2018 by niti ayog and the focus areas of artificial intelligence as been implemented in india are um, uh, mentioned as the healthcare agriculture sector education smart cities and infrastructure smart mobility and transportation so we can see that the core areas are um, uh, adopted have adopted the artificial intelligence and they have also dealt Uh, with the ethical issues and held that the efforts had to be concentrated to accelerate adoption and reskilling artificial intelligence with privacy security ethics and intel intellectual property rights permeating as common denominations for all their recommended initiatives so even niti ayog was of the opinion that to implement their recommendations it is important that the the re adoption the reskilling or adoption of ai has to be combined with the privacy security ethics and ipr uh, being taken into consideration and uh, the recommendations by niti ayog also included building an attractive ip regime for artificial in intelligence innovation by the government and um, also suggested for examining and issuing appropriate modifications to the ip regulatory regime pertaining to artificial intelligence so this uh, really brings us to the topic that we are currently uh, going to discuss that niti ayog has made a recommendation that certain appropriate and necessary modifications have to be brought in in the ip regulatory regime uh, next slide please so as we see the uh, present uh, indian patent system consists of the patents act to protect the patent to um, i mean governing the patents the trademarks act the copyrights act the designs act and the geographical indications so um uh, uh, sorry for being nostalgic but you know i i'll just like to um, uh, take you on to the patent act wherein the patent has been divide, uh, defined and the invention has been defined and this is important for us for the purpose of this discussion that we understand the definition of invention so primarily patent means a patent for any invention granted under this act and invention means a new product or process involving an inventive step and capable of industrial application so every term every word that has been used in this definition has um the significance so it shows that novelty and innovativeness are essential for granting a patent and um as per section 3 uh, we know that uh, the inventions that cannot be uh, granted patent have been um, mentioned which includes frivolous inventions and discovery of known substance etc so when we uh, uh, see that uh, they have talked in the section 3 refers to discovery of known substance this has a very big effect on uh, the um, uh, patent patentability and this we will come across uh, when we are talking about the non obviousness and uh, further the inventions relating to atomic energy are also not patentable next slide so we see that the uh, uh, section 6 of Uh, Indian Patent Act, Patents Act provides for uh, the persons entitled to apply for patents. So when we say persons here, um, it it, uh, it refers to a person claiming to be the true and first inventor of the invention. 
a person being the assignee of the person claiming to be the true and first inventor in respect of the right to make such an application a legal representative of any deceased person who immediately before his death was entitled to make such an application and um, there and thereafter we have section 48 which talks about the rights of patentees however when we are talking about the persons who can claim to be the true and first inventors of the invention can we see can we foresee a, um, a scenario where the person claiming to be the inventor happens to be the artificial intelligence can artificial intelligence claim to be the inventor this is one question and um, we have seen um, while i was go going through the um, uh, going through one uh, article uh, sorry a white paper titled artificial intelligence collides with patent law i've seen that uh, one second. I've seen that um, uh, two artificial intelligence systems um, by name cognitive, sorry, the creativity machine and the invent, invention machine. They have created their own inventions. These are the artificial intelligence systems. And then they were granted patents, though the uh, inventors, uh, the inventor was um, named as the developer and not the AI system itself. However, tomorrow we may face a question where AI claims to be the inventor. So now what would be the rights that a patentee would get? Uh, here we are uh, talking about the uh, rights that are guaranteed under uh, section 48 of the Indian uh, Patents Act. And I think these are more or less equal uh, and um, I mean similar when compared to uh, the other uh, countries and um, uh, even the US. So for product patent, the exclusive right to prevent third parties who do not have his consent from the act of making, using, offering for sale, selling or importing for those purposes that product in India. For process patent, the exclusive right to prevent third parties who do not have his consent from the act of using that process and from the act of using, offering for sale, selling, or importing for those purposes, the product obtained directly by that process in India. So uh, more, I, I find that this is uh, almost similar, that it is an exclu exclusive, uh, it provides an exclusive right to the patentee and excludes third parties from using or selling the products that have been patented in somebody else's name. So um, what happens if there is an infringement of rights of this patent holder? And what would be the liability? And here, in, in, for, the purposes of, for the purpose of our discussion today, we are looking at the infringement of patent rights by artificial intelligence. And the next slide. So when we say that we are looking at the liability and non-obviousness, we will look into the uh, we can look into the white paper uh, which is titled as Artificial Intelligence Collides with Patent Law, and which was presented at the World Economic Forum in April 2018. But then, before we, um, I can just give you a certain um, excerpts from the uh, uh, white paper. And let us discuss certain issues like whether the current patent laws or system equipped or ready to um, address any um, uh, issues that would arise out of uh, patent infringement by artificial intelligence. When artificial intelligence can be considered as inventor, at the same time, can we also consider artificial intelligence as infringer or an inducer, I understand US recognizes induced infringement. So can artificial intelligence be considered as inducer of infringement and infringer itself? So these being the questions, we must understand that the current patent laws or system does not recognize any patent infringement that is independent of any human inter intervention 
or intelligence. And the system is also not equipped to address any infringement by artificial intelligence. The questions arising on how the liability or damages should be addressed in cases of patent infringement by AI does not have a solution as per the current um, uh, patent system. So I would agree with um, Zamir that definitely yes, the patent laws uh, are in such a shape and form that they can provide for the liability. However, it requires amendment or modification to suit the situation where AI itself is involved in infringement because of its autonomous uh, capacity to make independent decisions. As AI is continuously evolving, tomorrow there will be a situation where AI has taken a completely autonomous or independent decision, which has resulted in a patent infringement. In that case, can we hold AI itself liable? Or who should we hold liable in such a scenario? Because the present system does not recognize any infringement by AI independent of any human action. However, we can derive certain guidance and help for getting solutions for, for such questions as found in the European Parliament Resolution of 16 February 2017, uh, which has made recommendations to the Commission on civil law rules on robotics. In the present scenario and the current patent system, AI cannot be held liable for its acts that cause any damage to third parties. And for the purpose of this webinar, we are restricting the damage to patent infringement. So who is held responsible under the present setup? Is it the human agent that is behind the acts or omissions of AI? And that could be either the manufacturer owner or user what is the logic behind me, behind holding the human agent liable is simple that this human can foresee and could have, could have avoided the infringement activity by ai however if we see the pace at which the progress is made in ai's autonomous and cognitive features makes it utmost important to determine the legal responsibility for AI's actions, especially in patent infringement. So in these circumstances, we are faced with another question as to whether the rules of liability as are existing makes the present patent laws and policies would be sufficient or is there a need to bring in new legal principles or rules or policies to provide clarity on the legal liability? particularly where the cause of infringement cannot be traced back to a human involvement. So what should be the basis for us to determine the liability? We have only questions. And what could be the solutions? First, where, uh, where we have a human interface, then is it the end user? Can we say that the end user can be made liable? Hypothetically, if we say yes, on the basis that the user of a product is liable for its consequences arising of its usage. However, we cannot say that all the end users can foresee the patent infringement and when these end users are more particularly the individuals. So typically what happens in these circumstances is that the company that is sued by a patent owner would be the product man manufacturer or the developer. And we have seen that end users usually get indemnified by these product developers. So this brings us to another question that human agent that is the developer or manufacturer of a product should be made liable for a patent infringement by artificial intelligence. However, we have seen that it has been a prevailing practice that the developer or the manufacturer is sued by the patent owner. However, when the AI is functioning autonomously and is taking independent decisions, can the human agent be held liable? Or if we cannot hold a human liable, then can the AI itself be held solely liable? 
If so, can our laws adequately address such legal exigencies and provide redressal in providing the compensation? As a solution, as per the European Parliament resolution, there were certain measures suggested as possible solutions, and one of them being an obligatory insurance scheme or a fund to be created where the insurance cannot meet such exigency. They have also offered another solution is to hold AI itself liable then what should be the compensation or what should be the uh, uh, reasonableness in, find, in assessing the liability. Then they said that the uh, liability should be analogous to how the liability of a corporate entity is assessed because the second solution offered by the European Parliamentary Solution, uh, sorry, resolution is that the AI should be given the legal status. Sorry, uh, um, uh, Ronnie, yeah, you can go to the last slide. Last slide. So the solution offered by uh, the uh, resolution is that AI should be considered as a separate legal entity like any other corporate entity. And therefore, even if AI is held liable, it should be held liable as a corporate entity and should be assessed for the patent infringement. And they have also suggested that the liability can be mitigated by making certain contractual solutions. That is while documenting itself, the parties can come to an understanding about the liability wherein the parties would be in a position to pre-estimate the liability and damages. So these are the measures that have been suggested. So there has to be a balance. Um, Ronnie, can you please take me to the last one? So I would suggest that as the current system, as the current system provides for the um, for mitigation of risks as well as the adequate compensation damages and enforcement of legal rights of a patent owner against any patent infringement however to strike a balance between the competing factors if there has to be an adjustment brought in the patent system wherein certain modifications or amendments have to be made so that any legal exigencies can be met in case of any patent infringement by artificial intelligence. So this is my, um, these are my insights, I mean thoughts and insight about the uh, liabilities um, that can be attributed when AI is the uh, cause for patent infringement. Thank you. Excellent, thank you so much uh, for those insights, uh, Zameer and Aruna. And uh, what uh, we have learned a lot of things today, uh, f being the AI, the future of um, everything now. So now I would like to open the floor for questions uh, to our speakers. Uh, so you can uh, raise your hand and I can see. Uh, right, OK, so Rahul already has a question. I'm unmuting you, Rahul. Can you ask your question? Yeah, hi, thanks. Uh, so I had a question with from both the speakers, from Mr. Zameer as well as uh, uh, Ms. Aruna. Uh, so yeah. I just wanted to check, uh, is there a particular legislation that is already in place anywhere across the globe which specifically has probably amended their current uh, uh, IPR laws or something which are categorically dealing with, uh, you know, uh, inculcating or recognizing AI as Yeah, I can answer. Aruna, you want to go ahead? No, Zameer, uh, you can, please. So, you know what? Uh, so, I did a research. Rahul, it's a beautiful question, a good question you yes. asked. Uh, uh, I did already a research on this. Uh, yeah. So, there are no laws. What's happening is that the, the, the patents are getting filed internationally on mm -hmm. artificial technologies and all other technologies. It's getting filed. Uh, mm -hmm. What is happening is that these matters have now started going to the courts. Okay. Now, so through that, the, once the law is a, yeah, so in, 
like, like yeah so like we say in india the law is developing uh, yeah. that's what uh, you see here in artificial intelligence because what are while uh, you're right when i was in stanford doing this ip uh, us ip laws we had a lot of things to discuss about this artificial intelligence and all of the technologies you know so autonomous vehicle is basically the google car technology now are the laws adopted to embrace these technologies in united states law is embraced to take because technological developments have been existing it's not that so computers were there so it's like it's a progression so laws are adapted to that now whether there is a specific loophole or a gap under the law to an extent of this technological for example when you minutely see this blockchain technology now mm -hmm. blockchain technology uh, is like your financial transaction which is happening from united states to china okay mm -hmm. now those blockchain technologies consist of algorithms data as well as the users which are located in multiple jurisdictions so these are the three basic issues which came up there so one there is an involvement of an algorithm one there is an involvement of a financial transaction and one there is an involvement of multi users across uh, jurisdictions now when you go for patenting of uh, blockchain technologies what you do in your specification is to write down about these things from a perspective of multi jurisdiction now when you take a multi jurisdiction you may have a law in united states but will that work in uh, china no what else can work in china it's about the treaties which they have signed at a united nations level mm -hmm. so presently the laws are adapted cases are going before the courts for interpretation of those laws in terms of the new technologies but otherwise i don't see uh, you know i only see techno uh, laws like gdpr which has now come out uh, technology laws i have not seen a very good growth like for example uh, there was chat bot which came in you know sometimes so we had a chat yeah. room concept we had a yahoo chat you had chat room and then there was chat bot okay yeah. now when you on that chat bot it automatically gets installed in the computer so there was a question saying that you know whether the chat bot can also uh, steal information from the computers and whether the law can stop it there are laws which are existing now in india when you consider technology it's about information technology act 2000 which is existing your intellectual property laws are ex existing so laws are existing i only feel future technologically there might be interpretations which may come up from the courts of law fair enough that's my take on it excellent thank you so much for that zameer uh, and uh, thank you uh, rahul uh, anybody else has a question uh, please uh, go ahead uh, raise your hand and uh, i'll be able to unmute you okay. right okay so i believe uh, no question no more question yes i have one question uh, from a participant um oh, so you Zameer, could ask uh, us multiple questions we'll be happy to answer <laughs> in fact <laughs> absolutely yeah. so so zamir uh, as you were talking about gdpr and ip uh, and in context with the uh, artificial intelligence now um, yeah. moving forward uh, when when ai is uh, been uh, now ai is uh, taking over a lot of things so how yeah. how would a person uh, you know uh, a normal person who who is actually sharing of his data to uh, any website or anything would ensure other than gdpr of course being uh, other part of the world that his data is not being misused yeah so gdpr basically gave you two option one is that if your data is already in the market so that's what the problem happened with uh, 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 facebook and cambridge analytica the uh -huh. data was already out we have already uh, put a tick mark on the check boxes which are available on all the websites and right. we have been doing it for last 10 years the only thing is the awareness of your data being exchanged for consideration or for use uh, w is a scenario which is now out in the market from last 2 3 years it basically all started with uh, conceptually facebook was not facing this particular issue 
when i visited facebook the biggest issue they were facing is about fa- uh, fake news okay now now once that fake news came into picture then you know i mean the question came up who's the target of your fake news and once the target of the fa- fake news came up then it it showed that you know there is some data which is available which is now been synchronized and then the ads are targeted and okay. then the us election came up and then it become it became little more famous and that's how cambridge analytica got exposed and facebook said i mean we are doing it under a contractual obligation but we are stopping it now so data is already out in the market now if right. you want to stop that gdpr gives you an option to write to them to write to forget that's Correct. what in indian privacy law also is trying to develop uh, okay. the only thing is uh, gdpr made it uh, very clear is that uh it it brought about stringency so for example if you violate gdpr you have to pay a fine which is equivalent to around uh, 4% of your global annual turnover mm-hmm. or 20 mil or 20 million euro so that's the fine uh, they brought in that's okay. where now post gdpr these things have come up that you know when you share data uh, mm-hmm. whether it's emerging technologies like artificial intelligence machine learning big data analytics distributed ledger technology or uh, you know internet of things the most important question is about data privacy and security and ai based challenges which will come up it will okay. be a disruptive business model but then disruption <laughs> has to be also matched with the equity of the data so that's where uh, things are about excellent no right. okay uh, thank you so much for that zameer and uh, yeah. at this point of time uh, i would uh, like to uh, of course uh, take a bit uh, time to go ahead uh, thank you both yeah. the speakers for taking out your time and uh, talking uh, to us and uh, giving your yeah. insights uh, these are the Just email address only one input one input i would like to give on my email address they yeah. can use my email address uh, zameernathani@hotmail.com instead of my official id i okay. would really appreciate that That's everybody fine. was talking about on- autonomous car and self driving nobody asked me drone regulation <laughs> <laughs> i thought somebody will ask me that okay All right, but good but- to talk to everyone excellent thank you so much uh, so this is the email address as zameer has pointed out so zameer.nathani@hotmail.com is that correct zameer uh, no there is no dot it's zameer okay. nathani without dot zameer okay. nathani so, at hotmail.com at hotmail.com zameer nathani at hotmail.com everybody can yeah. know that so if you want to write and they can connect zameer. me on uh, linkedin also okay excellent that's great thank you so much for that and uh, of course uh, just to give you a bit of uh, thoughts uh on our um, tiktok.com and uh, so what we are coming up with and uh, so i would request everybody to please visit our website which is tiktok.com and uh, go through uh, a lot of things that we are updating there we are coming up with india's first uh, report on indian leak, uh, legal tech industry analysis so uh, it's something which is going to be out uh, in next uh, couple of months uh, so we are working on that report and uh, of course uh, we are conducting these webinars on a weekly basis so please join us and you can register uh, for multiple webinars uh, through our website which is ticketer.com and uh, of course uh, we have a lot of uh, insights which is available for everyone there who is connected to the legal fraternity to uh, gain uh, from this platform and uh, so i have i would like to thank everyone uh, for uh, being here and uh, thank you so much for being uh, such a patient audience have a great day and uh, enjoy your day bye bye